Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Becky and I cover true crime cases. I try and post weekly, but I'm not gonna lie, see this summer I have had to pick up a lot of work shifts. So I'm really sorry if I'm a couple of days late in posting, but I'm really trying to get into a weekly habit. And um, that's why I'm one day late on posting today. I have literally been working full time. I've never done that before. So it's been nice. Georgia Williams left her family home one night to visit a friend. She told her family she would only be a couple of hours. However, her family would never see Georgia alive again. In today's video, we will be covering what happened to Georgia Williams on the evening of 26th of May, 2013. This case is truly heartbreaking and infuriating, but we'll talk about that. And I will put all of the trigger warnings on this screen right now. So this is your warning. Please, please, please do not watch if you think you will be triggered by this video. I will catch you in the next video. I just also want to quickly say thank you so much for all of the support on the last video. And um, within a couple of hours of posting, I had like three comments and I was like, whoa, what is going on? I was so, so happy. So thank you so much for all of your feedback and support. It meant so, so much to me. And thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed over the last couple of days. I'm now at 467 subscribers. Uh, my goal is to hit 500 just now. So honestly, I'm so close. <laughs> but thank you so much to everybody who has stayed subscribed, who has who is a new subscriber, who's liked, commented, shared, whatever. Just thank you so, so much for your support always. And I hope you will stick around for videos in the future. But let's jump into today's case. Georgia Williams was just 17 years old when her life was brutally cut short. Georgia was a straight A student, however, was bullied at junior school, but she did not let this impact her. She stood up against the bullying and grew stronger. She's described as a sweet and loving girl who had the sweetest smile and hugs and an infectious personality. Georgia became an advocate for fairness for everyone. In her senior years of school, Georgia became popular amongst peers and adored by those who knew her. She became a student mentor, a student counselor, and in her final year, became a head girl. Her parents recall how proud they were of her. Georgia was described as a very good all-round sportswoman and loved the outdoor life. Her parents said, we will miss the sound of her slightly out of tune voice coming from her bedroom and the sunshine she brought into our lives. Georgia was an air training corps cadet who dreamed of becoming a Royal Air Force paramedic. She lived with her dad, Stephen, who was a detective constable, her mom, Lynette, and her sister, Scarlett. As soon as Georgia could work, she was hired at a local petrol station. She worked part-time hours and instantly made friends with her colleagues. Among her new friends was 23-year-old Jamie Reynolds. He worked as a petrol station attendant. He was in Georgia's sister's Scarlett's year in school. He was known to be quiet and quite reserved. Georgia's family knew him for years. He had been around the family before. Georgia's parents remark how he was quiet, but he was polite. Others described him as a little odd. However, he kept to himself. But no one truly knew what Reynolds was capable of and the horrific acts that he would later commit. When he was 15, his fascination for hanging, strangulation, and necrophilia started. It is alleged that he had tortured neighbors' pets. By the age of 22, Reynolds had accumulated 16,000 images in 72 videos of sexual violence. He had also written 40 stories about fatal attacks on girls he knew, and he had drawn nooses onto copies of their Facebook photos. Reynolds had previously told therapists that he found the images he had gathered arousing and had experimented with asphyxiation using a plastic bag. Reynolds was infatuated by Georgia. He had made previous advances on her. In February 2013, 
Reynolds texted Georgia and expressed his romantic feelings towards her. She rejected his advances and said, I don't see you in that way. Just stop. I don't want to ruin our friendship. I told you last time I just wanted to be friends. Reynolds claimed on the social networking site, Ask FM, he had kissed her and asked her out to a Valentine's Day party. I don't know if this is true or not. The only comment I could see was made by her best friend who said he had tried to kiss her once, but she rejected him and made it clear she was not interested. On May 8th, just weeks after, Georgia had updated her status to say that she was in a relationship with her boyfriend Matthew, Reynolds wrote on the site, Whenever I arrange dates, they either never happen or the girl magically gains a boyfriend. And it's worse when you actually like someone. You're stuck. Happy they're happy, but unhappy because it's not you. Reynolds also complained about being cursed when it came to woman and wrote that he would be forever alone. He said, Plus, I'm still kind of recovering my confidence, even now from the girl I fell hopelessly in love with, and fighting didn't save that. Georgia's parents were completely unaware of how dangerous Reynolds really was. Georgia's parents explained if they had any incline to Reynolds' dangerous desires, they would have never let Georgia go to his home. Reynolds had told Georgia about his passion for photography and how he wanted to pursue a career as a photographer. Georgia, being the nice girl she was, supported him and offered to help him whenever he needed it. On the evening of Sunday, May 26, 2013, Georgia told her parents and sister that she was heading to Jamie's house and would only be a couple of hours. Georgia was excited as she had her first ever driving lesson the next morning and had also arranged to meet her boyfriend at the Slam Dunk Music Festival. However, she never made it to any of these plans. She left home at 7.55 p.m. and by 8.20, Georgia's life was savagely taken. Reynolds had tricked Georgia into going to his house for an artistic photo shoot involving a simulation hanging. Reynolds lived with his mother, his mother's partner, and his sister, who was also 17. Reynolds' parents were away in Italy, so he had the place to himself. Georgia's home was only a few minutes' walk away from Reynolds' home. To the lead-up before Georgia coming round, Reynolds had bought items including a rope and learned how to tie a noose. He had attached it to a hanging mechanism in the house's loft hatch above the landing. Reynolds also had bought a leather jacket, leather shorts, and high heels for Georgia to wear during the shoot. He had texted Georgia about what would be included in the photo shoot. He said, You would be standing on a box. I would edit that out on the computer so it looked like you were floating. However, he had written a story entitled Georgia Williams in Surprise, which detailed exactly what he had intended to do. Photographs found on Reynolds' hard drive show the last pictures of Georgia alive, smiling and posing with a red rope around her neck. He then kicked the box from underneath Georgia, and the next series of photographs show her unalive. Reynolds posed her body, both partially clothed and nude, in different areas of the house, including on his parents' bed. He then assaulted George's body and photographed himself doing this. A few hours had passed and George's mom hadn't heard any update from Georgia, so she texted her daughter asking how everything was going. Reynolds then used George's phone to text her mother, telling her that she was going to be staying a little bit longer with her friends. The next morning came around and George's parents realized she wasn't home yet. George's mother sent another text asking where she was. Her mother received a text back a few hours later saying she had completely lost track of time and forgot to let her parents know that she was staying at her friend's overnight. The message concluded with, 
my battery is dying, and her usual three kisses. This was unusual for Georgia, as she was responsible and always updated her family on what she was doing and where she was. It was now Tuesday morning, and the parents were worried. They contacted Georgia's friends to see if she was with them, or to see if she had actually stayed with them. None of her friends had seen, heard, or had a sleepover with Georgia. Her boyfriend Matthew raised the alarm on Facebook and explained how Georgia was missing. Her parents then went to the police. The only information they had was the fact that she was at Jamie Reynolds' home on the Sunday. When the police conducted a background check on Reynolds, the shocking discovery of Reynolds' past came to light. In 2008, Reynolds had attempted to trap and strangle a 16-year-old girl at his home. The review conducted of this case and it was revealed that the investigation was seriously flawed. The police had treated it as an assault, the girl's injuries were not photographed, and neither she nor Reynolds were referred to a forensic medical examiner. He was given a final warning after that event. In 2011, he was again reported. This time, he had reversed his car into that of a girl who had rejected his romantic advances. I also want to add that six police officers were later served with misconduct notices after the full review was completed. Personally, I find this infuriating at the fact that Georgia's murder could have been potentially prevented. Due to Reynolds pretending that Georgia was staying at a friend's house, this gave him a few hours to dispose of Georgia's remains. However, before disposing of Georgia's remains, he had calmly gone to watch a Fast and Furious film at a cinema in Wrexham whilst her body lay in the back of the van. Reynolds drove to a remote woodland near Wrexham where he had dumped her body. Georgia had suffered abrasions caused by Reynolds when he dragged her from his mother's partner's van to the secluded site. He then fled to Scotland via Rail, Chester and Kendall in Cumbria. After a UK-wide manhunt, Reynolds was arrested by officers outside a primary inn in Glasgow city centre on May 28th. In an interview, Reynolds denied any knowledge of what had become of Georgia, but then later said, I just can't believe I have hurt her. That was never my intention. When questioned, he refused to reveal where he had dumped her body. When the police tracked the movements of the van that Reynolds was driving, they noticed there was a five-hour gap. Police appealed to the public to see if anyone had seen this van during the gap. Luckily, a few members of the public came forward and said, We actually helped this man at the side of the road when his van got stuck. Five days after Georgia's disappearance, they found her body in the woodland near Wrexham. A postmortem showed that Georgia died of asphyxiation as a result of pressure to the neck. Further examination also found bruising in her back indicating that Reynolds had levered the helpless teenager using his knee to apply further downward pressure. Her parents say that they will forever carry the horrific memory of seeing their daughter's body as it lay in the hospital's chapel. On December 2nd, 2013, Reynolds was seen by George's father at the Stafford Crown Court laughing and joking, showing zero remorse for the brutal acts that he had committed. Reynolds originally pleaded not guilty, however changed his plea to guilty in the first day of the trial. On December 19th, Reynolds became one of the youngest in British criminal history to be sentenced to a whole life term in prison. The judge said, I take very seriously the conclusion of psychiatrist Prof. Paul Peckett that you have the potential to become a serial killer. In 2014, Reynolds tried to appeal his sentence and thankfully it was rejected. 
The Georgia Williams Trust was set up to provide a lasting long-term legacy for her local community. It was set up just a few weeks after her death and at the specific request of the teenager's family. The Trust celebrates Georgia's life and achievements by enabling young people to access adventure, outdoor activities, and volunteering. That is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody is staying safe, happy, and healthy, and I really, really hope that Georgia's family are doing okay.